Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you three different ways to put a photo into a shape inside of Photoshop Elements and also how to change the background, just like we have right here. We'll start off with the easiest way, method number two, you probably have not seen before, and I'll show you my favorite method last. And the first thing we need, of course, is to get this image inside here, and I got this from Pixabay. Let's switch over there right now. And it's right here. I'll put this link in the description so you can just click on the link and get right to this page. Okay, let's go over here to the download button. You want to have this one here, the 1920 by 1280. It's the size I'm using for this project. And then click download and save this to someplace on your hard drive where you can easily get back to that. And I'm saving mine right here into my projects folder. This is just a new folder I made. I named it projects. And it's someplace that I put images that I'm working with currently. I'll delete this and clean this out later and then have more space for more stuff in the future. Choose save. And that's now saved onto my hard drive. Okay, so just get this out of the way. And I'll close this down. We can then open up that file, file open, navigate to your folder, and there it is. That's when we just downloaded, and we'll bring that up. Now mine comes in as a floating window, which is not necessary in this video, so I'll just go ahead and dock that right there. Now I'm doing this video here in Photoshop Elements 2024, and I just came out with new training for Photoshop Elements 2024. So if you want to learn everything about how to use this program, all the buttons left-hand side, all the menus, all the panels over here right-hand side, the organizer as well, everything, then take a look at my new training course. I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. Let's take a look at the first way here to put an image inside of a shape, and this is the easiest way. Go right up here where it says Guided, and then we're into Fun Edits right here, and scroll down, and you want this one here, Shape Overlay Effect. That's the one. Click on that, and then select the shape right-hand side. We'll be using the heart for all of these, and there's the heart shape. Pretty easy to see that. Grab the handles here, the control handles on the corners, and you can then increase the size of this until you get it where you want it. And I'll put it just about like that. I think that's pretty good. Hit the check mark. That's now positioned. The move tool allows you to move the image around. We've already done that. You can apply an effect to the outside if you want to, make things look more interesting. This button here resets everything. There we go. You can also apply an effect to the inside if you want. Same effects in here, same options. Again, there's that reset button. We're not doing any of that stuff. You can also crop into your photo here or crop into your shape right there. But for us, let's move on to the next button down here and then go over to In Advanced. And here's our basic image. Now we have this kind of a milky white background. We can change that. That's put in here by this thing here, by this overlay. Uncheck that, the overlay is gone. What we want to do though is to change the background in here. So come down to your background layer and come down to Graphics. And in here, we can choose something here from these background images. And I'll choose that one right there. Now, if you're seeing a blue triangle like this in the upper right-hand corner, that means that these have not been downloaded yet from the Adobe website. Not a big problem, you just double-click, it will download in just a few seconds. And you then have that on your computer, and it's available then for any time in the future. The reason why they do this is just to save you space on your hard drive. You're not going to be using most of these, so you only download the ones that you actually like and actually use. So click on this one here, the Cherry's background. Okay, I want to get this image positioned properly. Go back here to Layers. This comes in as two layers, as you can see. Click on the Overlay layer here. Hold the Control key down. Click on the Shape layer. We can then drag this over here into the center. If you want to, you can put in guidelines, get this to the exact center, but this is good enough for our use. We have control handles outside. I'll grab one of these corners up here. I'm just gonna make this image a bit bigger like that. I think that looks better. And we'll put some decoration here onto this shape. We'll come down to the styles button right down here, bring our styles up. And out of here, let's start off with a drop shadow. And I think this really big one right here. Click on that, that puts a drop shadow onto this edge. Ignore this thing, that doesn't matter. Now, go back here to Layers, make sure that we're still selected. Sometimes it drops you off of your selection and puts you on the background. So just double check that you're still in the correct selection in here. Back to our styles again. And then let's come down here to Strokes. And I'll choose this pink outline right here. Click on that, that applies a pink outline. Now it's way too thin as you can see, there's no adjustments over here. But if we come down to our Layers panel right here, there's this little FX right over here. Double click on that FX. This brings up these style settings. We're on the shape layer right here. There's the stroke, and we can bring the size of the stroke up right here, and I think that looks good. And there's method number one. Fast, easy, no real problems to this, but there are other ways to do this. So let's take a look at method number two. I'm just going to reset this, edit, 
and revert goes back to the original image. And before we go further here, let's make a duplicate of this background. Right click and duplicate, choose OK. That's because this next technique will be a permanent adjustment on this layer up here. So we want to have a background layer saved just in case things go wrong, we can easily repair that. Okay, now let's go over here to our tools panel and come down to the crop tool right here. And there you're seeing the crop tool has no shape and you're right. But down here, just to the right of the crop tool is the cookie cutter. Click on that. And here are all of our shapes. This is the same list of shapes that we had over there in the guided edit. We'll be using the same shape, the heart. Click on that. We can come in here and choose how you want to have this placed in. Unconstrained means you can put in any size that you want on this. That's the best one to go for. You can choose to pull from the center if you know the exact center. We don't need that right now. You can feather a bit if you want to. I'll leave this at one pixel feathering. That's okay. And then come up in here someplace and just drag that out like that. Now it's not perfect, so I'm going to grab the corners here and let's adjust the size a little bit. I can also adjust the shape just like that. Very easy to do, just to pull your sides out to adjust your shape. You can go skinnier or fatter on that. And there's skinnier and there's fatter. So choose your shape and you can position this exactly where you want on your image. There we are. And hit that check mark. As soon as you do that, that collapses that whole thing down into just one layer right there. That's why we made that backup copy. So I still have my whole picture back here just in case I want to do something else. So here's our image. Let's put this into the middle someplace. And at this point, same steps as last time. We'll put in a new background, now do graphics. Let's just find something else in here, something more interesting, just for a change of pace. And we'll see what we've got. We'll take that one right here. There we go, it's kind of a nice background. I like that one. Back to layers. Come back up onto this layer here. We'll apply our styles onto this layer. Last time we did that with the styles button down there. We'll do that again here. Same styles. There's that thin outline. Let's go back up here and let's go to drop shadows. Again, double check your layers. Make sure you're still in the right layer. Sometimes that does jump down to the background layer. There we go. Let's now bring back up our layer styles. Style settings, and we can then increase the size of our stroke. Now I want a different color in here on this stroke this time. I don't think pink works with this background image. Over here, click on the pink square right here. We get an eyedropper tool. Just come into your image, choose a nice color here from your image like that. I think I'll use this one. Choose okay, and here's our new image. We bring the shadow out a little bit if you want to, and choose okay, and there we go. That was method number two using the cookie cutter. Okay, let's now move on to number three, which is my personal favorite. This is the way that I normally do this. Back to our layers. Notice how the background here was changed. We lost our image and it was switched over to this background here. That's because when you're using these backgrounds, it replaces your background layer with whatever you select over here. The way to protect against that is to make two copies of your background layer. And we'll do that in the final technique. Let's just go back here and one more time, I'll go to edit and revert back to our original image. So let's right click, duplicate layer, Gives me one to work on just in case. And because I'll be changing my background, I want to do one more copy in here. So right click and duplicate layer. There we go. So that's my safety right here. We'll be changing this one and then we'll be using this one for our image. Okay, now to put an image on this, do the whole thing over here with graphics and let's switch down here to shapes. Lots and lots of shapes in here. One of the reasons why I like this is that we have all of these shapes. You can put your image inside of any of these shapes using this exact technique. This actually is used in one of the other guided edits up there, but we want that heart. So let's scroll down. We'll find the same heart again, and that's right there. And back to our layers here. It came in as a shape. It's underneath our image. Let's pull this up on top so you can see it. There it is. Now I can't really position very easily because I can't see through that. So I'll just make this a little bit less opaque. You can now see through it. And then we can come in here and get our shape just the size that we want. Again, I can go wider or skinnier. All those standard tricks are still available here. Hit that check mark. We need our photograph inside of that shape. So I'll set the shape's opacity back up to 100. Pull that underneath our background. Come to the background layer, right click on the name and create clipping mask. And this puts that shape inside. Now I don't see it because the background is showing. So I'll hide the background and there we go. We once again have the image inside of our shape. And I can move the image around right now and get it positioned exactly where I want. There we go. If I want to move the whole thing, just use the shift key 
and grab both layers, and I can then position the image anywhere I want to on my page. And I'll put it into the center right there. And then let's go down to graphics. Let's change graphics over to backgrounds. We'll find another different background in here. Let's just see what we have. That's kind of fun. I'll do this one. There we are. Back to our layers again. Notice how it changed that image. But because we saved the background twice, I still have my original saved right here as a protection just in case. Let's go up here. I'll grab these two layers again. And let me just get this a bit better centered. I'm just visually centering this. If you wanted to, you could put down guidelines to get it exact, but I think that looks just right. Now to put in our layer styles on this, make sure you're on the shape layer. Go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings. We want the drop shadow. Let's bring our distance out a little bit. I want the lighting angle over here. Bring the opacity up. It's pretty good. And size softens out that edge. The bigger the size, the softer the edge. And distance, of course, is pretty obvious. I think that's pretty good right there. Come down to stroke. There's our stroke. Let's come here into the color picker again and choose a color from the image. Let's try this kind of a green. That's kind of nice. I think I want to make a bit more green. I'll just bring the color over here a little bit. Choose OK. There's our color. And that's our third way to put an image inside of a shape. Now, there are lots of possibilities with this. You can use text, put your image inside of text. It's a standard trick of mine. You can use any of those brush stroke things over here in graphics. This is really nice. Come back over here to shapes and I'll scroll up. All the stuff in here, especially these that have real wild kind of squiggly brushy things. These look really nice to place images inside of that and put it on a white background. Real great look. And here's even kind of a brushy effect for a heart. I've done a few of these things in different videos in the past, paint splatters, and you can overlap these and then merge those layers to get even more shapes in here. Now, if you still have some questions as to how all these different tools are used, one way is to get my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I have courses for every single version of Photoshop Elements. You'll find that on my website, howtogurus.com. I'll put a link for that right down there. Or you can use my brand new Photoshop Elements companion tool. It's called the HTG Photo Coach. And it's a text-based program that gives you step-by-step -step instructions for almost everything inside of Photoshop Elements. You just type in what you're looking for, what you want to find out about, and you'll get a nice list and article all about how to work with that tool or that technique or that method. Great program that works perfectly with video-based training, giving you all that additional insight that you may not get from the video training. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. That really does help out my channel a lot. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. I really appreciate that too. And I'll see you next time.